The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host as always. We'd like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And uh, wow, uh, Fed came out with minutes and a collective yawn from the uh, market. Uh, S&P cash was up about 27 points when it came out. Uh, for the first uh, five minutes, it was at 27. So a whole lot of nothing so far anyway. Uh, when we start off and see how volume is today, um, very light, uh, under 3 billion shares. Uh, we got a bounce, and again, it's going to be on even lighter volume. As uh, we've been talking about, it just looks like we're starting to kind of auger in uh, like a Georgia tick, and just not a whole lot uh, to report other than uh, lower highs and higher lows for the most part. So eventually, we'll get to the end of that triangle, and the markets will breakout one way or the other. Generally, the first breakout is the head fake uh, on a lot of these stocks and maybe even the general market itself. Uh, looking at the rest of the market, uh, crude up uh, nine cents for West Texas, gold up eight dollars and seventy cents. Silver's up 11 and a half cents, not much going on there. Uh, copper pretty much unchanged. We look at the rest of the stuff. Uh, it is just a very quiet day. Um, and the comments from the Fed are saying that the market may have more cuts than the Fed is willing to give. That was one of the comments coming out of it. But other than that, like I said, fairly quiet. Um, so uh, just don't know what to tell you other than that. Of course, today is uh, the Delta Neutral Day uh, for the option market makers. This is when mathematically they don't want to take any more risk and they're going to hedge every position they have. So if there is a big market move, that they don't get wiped out. Um, and of course, eh, so far, not a lot of of uh, way to actually say that they're wrong, but uh, we'll take a look at it. But uh, again, fairly light volume on a big bounce. We were actually kind of expecting that bounce. I didn't. Um, I had problems. So I didn't get the chart in the newsletter this morning or the actual data. Either one. It took me till about 10:30 to extract it. Uh, but uh, once I saw it, wasn't very surprised to see uh, that we got a bounce. Um, the where is it at here? The uh, put call ratios uh, were down to nothing yesterday, uh, and well, we'll zoom in here a little bit. Um, we were down on basically 50% uh, yesterday on both the equities and the VIX. Um, just Nobody willing to buy a lot of downside protection, even in the uh, big pushes lower. And, of course, we bounced out here today. But, again, um, I would have been feeling a lot better about a bounce today if we would have had very high put-call ratios to show that there's some fear in there. Uh, just no fear in this market whatsoever. And of course, uh, one of the reasons a market goes higher is that when it does go lower, there are people there to cover shorts. If you're not shorting a market, uh, that's when the big uh, air pockets develop and you get the huge and fast moves down because there, everybody just stands away uh, without any shorts to cover. There are no natural buyers uh, and the buyers that are there just decide to stand by until the market quits going lower. 
But uh, generally, that's when you get the general, uh, the huge accelerations uh, to the downside. And that's got me somewhat worried, let me put it that way today. We're at 2919, let's call it 2920 on the S&P cash. Dow's up 188, NASDAQ's up 82, and the Russell is up uh, 6.7. Uh, got some questions here today, and I wanted to get into them early. Uh, okay. Uh, I emailed this person back, but I wanted to said, uh, uh, I'm a new subscriber, listener to your show. Mentioned today, I was wondering what you might be and if you had a list of companies that you thought were particularly strong and good to buy on a pullback. Um, there are some companies that I do look at, but most of the time, I just wait uh, for the signal in the general markets. Then I go and find the best sector and then try to find the best stocks out of that sector. Uh, and, you know, I did, I used to do a lot of work, uh, but until I know or feel that I've got a very good uh, low uh, either setting up or finished, I don't go and do it. And that's why I haven't done it now. That, uh, that I don't have my list. I haven't gone and looked for that list. I want some kind of significant low coming into this market uh, that I know I can buy. And like I said, uh, just looks like higher lows and lower highs uh, in this market, and which just makes me think we're in a contracting, uh, narrowing range, and that's never any good. Uh, for the rest of the market. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, we got a little history, and then we'll go on to some charts when we return. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. On this day in 1967, socialist revolutionary and guerrilla leader Che Guevara, age 39, is killed by the Bolivian army. Eh, maybe. May have been killed by us, too. The U.S. Uh, military-backed Bolivian forces captured uh, Guevara on October 8th by battling his band of guerrillas in Bolivia and assassinating him. The following day, his hands were cut off as proof of death, and his body was buried in an unmarked grave. Uh, of course, uh, if you want to know a little bit more of the story, um, he was uh, fighting Castro, really, for control of of uh, Cuba and wanted to continue uh, the giant uh, revolution uh, for communism and socialism. Uh, of course, that's what he was doing, uh, fomenting uh, problems down there in uh, South America. Of course, uh, when you see somebody that wears a shirt with his face on it, um, I think you almost have to say uh, it's no different than seeing somebody that would wear the shirt of uh, Hitler. That is, this guy was the nastiest of all nasties, uh, raping and uh, killing nuns and kids and girls and everything else. He was uh, one of the worst human beings possibly alive. And uh, so when I see people with wearing his shirt, I think of what Khrushchev, Khrushchev said about American communists. Useful idiots. They do not know what they speak about. Anyway, evil man assumed room temperature on this day in 1967. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And as we come back, uh, see if we even moved a tick. Uh, we're at 28. We moved up a whole quarter of a point in four minutes. Uh, 29.21 on the S&P cash, but again, uh, not very happy about what we're seeing in the volume. Uh, just over 3 billion shares in the CBOE consolidated tape. Uh, if you're new to the show, uh, want a link to that so you can follow along with a volume at home, uh, just email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, to, 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 we'll answer some other questions as we go along, uh, not just straight stock questions. Uh, seems like your uh, machine learning uh, programs have uh, come all along over the last year. What's the biggest difference or the biggest change uh, that changed that? Um, for the most part, machine learning algorithms where you throw a bunch of numbers in one side and it comes out the other. And there was no ability to see what was going on inside. And there may be several, if not hundreds of processes going on. So you can't really or couldn't really see uh, what was going wrong and why a few of these things were written uh, for very big problems like image identification and handwriting identification. Those were uh, written by PhD guys who specifically knew all the algorithms and wrote them themselves so that they work, but they were designed from the ground up to do a specific job. Problem is uh, generalizing a lot of that. Um, I saw uh, a one of the famous luminaries of machine learning saying that out of uh, one out of a hundred models, uh, that someone works on, even to the point of giving up on it. Just one out of 100 is actually uh, going into some level of production, whether it's a big company doing it or a small individual. Uh, and that is because these things don't generalize well, and they don't generalize well because you can't see what's going on inside them. Uh, over the last year, uh, that has changed to some extent. Uh, some of the different packages that some of these big folks like Facebook and Google have put together now have a way for you to actually peer in and be able to debug uh, some of it. I'm going to have to sneeze again, I think.
Done sneezing now. Uh, so a lot of what I did over the last year, there was a lot of shimmers of greatness buried in a lot of what I was doing, but you couldn't really tell where you were going wrong. Uh, so it was working well. Uh, but with some of the new packages coming out with the ability for you to actually look uh, process by process and see what was going on. Like I said, it's, uh, it's kind of like a big factory. A lot of stuff comes in one side of the door and then some kind of product leaves on the other side. But if all you knew of the product didn't quite work on the other side, you weren't exactly sure where it messed up in the production staff. You got Lucy in there picking up her chocolates and uh, maybe the uh, thing's going a little bit too fast. Of course, uh, hilarity ensues. So uh, that, that's kind of it. The biggest difference has been that a lot of these technique, well, the techniques have been around for maybe a couple of years that really help in the stock market. Uh, but um, even last, I think it was last Christmas, uh, I was saying that these new packages had come on and they allow you to go back in there and look layer by layer to see uh, when things were working better and which ones weren't. Um, so you, if, if there was a good description, it is a software allows you to debug the stuff and make it better these days. So that would be it. Give me a call at 877-927-6648 on a quiet day. Of course, uh, question about uh, Delta Neutral. And I try to stay out of trying to write on a whiteboard with huge functions because normally the functions, the way that they're written um, from the academics are great for the mathematician but not the programmer. I kind of look everything at a view as how would I actually enable that in some kind of software. A lot of times, uh, most of these algorithms are already uh, implemented in software. Sometimes you need to make some changes to them. Uh, but the idea is that, maybe I can say it a better way, uh, the idea is that there is a formula to make sure that your risks are balanced going forward. And uh, on this day, the option market makers have figured out long ago that the risk overwhelms uh, any uh, possible reward uh, with about uh, seven trading days uh, before options expire on the monthlies. Now, the weeklies tend to be much more expensive. Uh, and uh, there's a good business in that. I don't particularly like the weeklies unless I'm playing them on Fridays and there's very little or no premium. Um, and a lot of times it's even better to go out on Friday and still get the monthlies. Uh, you'll find out that they actually, uh, when, you when you conflate the uh, time left uh, and that you could possibly hold it into Monday uh, where you couldn't on the weeklies on a Friday, sometimes the weeklies or the monthlies are still better. Anyway, on this day, the option market makers decide to sell, uh, best description, uh, they're an arms dealer and they want to sell to both sides so that the war doesn't stop. They just want the decay to go all the way into that uh, week from Friday uh, that we're going to have on the 18th of this month. Uh, and sometimes it's just buying uh, one side or the other of the actual underlying stock. Sometimes it's buying futures and edging the entire market. Uh, there's a lot of different things that can go into this, but generally they'll try to even up both sides of uh, the market. And that gives you a very good clue uh, as to where uh, the option market makers think that the stocks should expire a week uh, and a half, actually seven days from tomorrow on the 18th of October. So, this is one of the days where I get more data from tonight to seeing how stocks change from yesterday's close to today's close. And this is uh, one of the times where, you know, I, I, I try to get all the data I can um, as early as I can, but for the most part to get qualified and, and tested data that you know is right. It's a lot of times it's 9.30 or 10 o'clock at night before it's audited and I get a, a copy that I know that should be mostly right, still isn't. 
mostly right. Um, but uh, I do digress. Uh, I knew a guy that wrote a book. Uh, he wasn't uh, didn't have the uh, best um, spelling of the world in the world, uh, but uh, he sent it off uh, with 24 mistakes and it got it back with 48. And that's uh, uh, sometimes uh, you pay for high quality and it just gets worse. And uh, I get pay for high quality data and then have to go back and work on it too. So nothing new out there. In the meantime, hang on. Be back after this. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Chart allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're going to go through some stocks here. Uh, you can, of course, email me at path at TFNN.com. And we're going to look at some stocks. Of course, I start. Uh, pretty much by looking at the broad indexes and the sectors. Uh, but one of the biggest things I do every day is run a scan and look for stocks with patterns that see, uh, that are rather unambiguous. One of those is looking for highs that have tested previous highs on around 50% of the volume. Same thing, uh, testing lows on around half the volume. Uh, and uh, we're looking at GBT. Of course, this is where if you're going to get any kind of indication that a stock's going to bounce, a uh, pretty good indication is uh, significantly lighter volume. And uh, GBT 
Uh, $44.75, the August 28th low with 2 million shares. You got into it yesterday with 1.3. Even the day before, uh, you got into that same candle with just a million shares. You had a fairly nice reversal back into the trading range, a little pop up here. But again, not a lot of volume so far. It looks like we're trying to beat out a bottom, but a much less violent one than we saw back in August. Um, a lot of these stocks are actually looking very good. If we ever got a signal out of the indexes that says the index want to go much higher. Uh, Genesco, wasn't that the oil, olive oil company in The Godfather? Genesco. Maybe it's a common name in Italian. I do not know. Uh, GCO uh, gapped up uh, back on September 9th and 8th, right? Yeah, on 6th and 8th. Um, reversed, came right back the next day, um, and you had some fairly decent volume, about 1.2 million shares. Got into that yesterday and filled the gap, or filled that gap with 235,000 shares. Let's see what these folks do that those folks don't do. Uh, this is a footwear, or footwear apparel and accessories. Apparently no olive oil to be seen. Okay, uh, Johnson & Murphy Group, I know those guys, and Licensed Brands, Journeys Group, a uh, whole bunch of other one. But apparently a lot of stuff in shoes. Uh, I don't see that being a big... Uh, business to be in, but uh, yeah, chart says that this is finding fairly decent support around this $36 level. Uh, we looked at GBT. Uh, let's look at uh, 1 800 flowers. A nice uh, gap going back uh, on high volume. That was uh, 1.5 million shares on the 31st of January of 2019. Uh, this year, by the way, if you live in Lutz. Um, you've got uh, 1.5 million shares on the way up. Now, what do we have on the way down? Filling the basically a double gap, 85,000 shares so far. So, eh, I guess we got Christmas coming up, but eh, not all that much in the way of flowers that you have on Mother's Day and Valentine's Day and all that stuff. I guess that's coming up. Uh, but not a bad looking chart other than the heavy volumes down on the 22nd of August and the uh, 23rd of August. Uh, now it's kind of come back down. So, yeah, 14 bucks, you could see 17 bucks on a bounce. Uh, but certainly there isn't a lot of pressure uh, on the downside. Uh, but again, no signal from the broader market uh, that we're ready to go that much higher. Uh, up 30 points on the S&P cash. Of course, we're down 30 points, up 30 points another day, and that's it. Embraer, uh, Embrardi, yeah, Embraer, SA, which is the uh, Brazilian uh, airline manufacturer, ERJ, the August 28th low, and I may have to sneeze once again. August 28th, $16.73, one77 Five million shares, and only three on that one. Um, to to do, and yes, I'll have to clean off this microphone. Um, anyway, uh, sixteen point seven three on August 28th with 1.75 million shares. Got into it yesterday with 1.2 million shares. Into it today with just 639,000 shares. Uh, but uh, what you really need is a close back above that low, 1673, to prove the point, as a Wyckoff trader would tell you. Uh, and of course, uh, we're at 1655, so you'd really need kind of a little bit of run before the end of the day. Um, but again, a lot of these stocks are hitting these lows, and we aren't here seeing anything in the way of volume, which means we're probably going to get a fairly decent bounce as soon as uh, maybe something comes back into the market that tells us so. CERS, which is Cirrus Corporation, uh, testing its low of June 3rd, 
$4.49 with 1.8 million shares. Got into it with uh, basically half, a little under a million shares yesterday. Got to 441. Uh, and of course, right now you're printing off there about $4.50, which is a penny above that June 3rd low. Uh, one of the things I have noticed is a great deal more of the stocks in my scans are coming uh, from uh, less expensive under $5 stocks. Generally, before a market tops, the last thing that happens is you get a lot of these penny stocks racing for highs. And I would say I still don't think that there's anything that says that we don't go back up to the highs by the end of the year, but uh, just no signal yet. And of course, one of the things if we start moving back up that all these inexpensive stocks basically are trading on very light if no or vaporous volume at the lows may tell you that the next big move is not going to just be in like the Russell 2000, but in a subset of those stocks of very inexpensive stocks. Uh, SEMA Bay Therapeutics, we talked about the biotechs. Again, very light volume for most of them, but no real sign that this thing wants to blow through the highs. Uh, June 11th, $4.82 with 18 million shares. Uh, we're going into that with just uh, 756,000 shares today. So again, fairly quiet. Cargill, I think this is Cargill, isn't it? C-A-R-G. Cargurus. Well, I keep forgetting that each time. Uh, this one's finding some fairly decent, um, or trying to find decent support on this December 24th, 2018 flow at $30.29 with 600, excuse me, with 360,000 shares. Uh, did spike through it on 1.2 million shares on October 4th. Uh, last couple of days, Oh, well, we've got 416,928,000 ,000, shares yesterday. So this one certainly looks like it could blow apart. Uh, if the market does not find uh, a shovel of sand underneath its keel, uh, look for that one to go on. And we're almost ready for the break. Um, Ball Corporation just kind of going sideways and bouncing along, but uh, certainly half the volume of the September 11th low, $70.76 with 6.4 million shares. Uh, but again, done count going down, just not ready to go up. We'll be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in a tax opportunity zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stock Stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? 
If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back. And, of course, uh, wow. Wow. Uh, up about three S&P points since the FOMC meeting, and it is just painfully, painfully slow. But generally, after the pain comes uh, the excitement of very fast markets once everything gets turned around. Only doing 3.3 billion shares as we go higher today, and that is a big warning signal. Uh, that we will have faster markets and probably lower markets if we continue to go higher with very little volume. Um, I'm going to say I uh, got a question uh, on if there's anything coming out on earnings that would matter. And in the morning, we've got the Delta. Uh, take a quick look and see if we have anything in that. Um, don't think that there's much going on in that other than you did get back Test the previous low, but you tested it on higher volume. Uh, in fact, three times, almost three times higher volume on October 3rd. You got a little bounce out of here. But I don't see anything that says that you want to be back into those airlines. Uh, on Friday, we've got Fastenal and InfoSystem. But neither one of those, I suspect, is going to move the market. We get into next week, and uh, the 15th is when earnings really starts in Toto, and I don't mean the little dog in Kansas. Uh, so we get to it. We'll go through these a little bit here. Uh, Tuesday the 15th is time, uh, and it's before the market open, uh, that we start getting uh, some big hitters coming out. And I think that's, uh, of course, uh, with options expiration on the 18th. Uh, shows you that uh, we're probably going to get a little bit ahead of that. J.P. Morgan on that morning, uh, looking for uh, $2.43. Uh, but uh, eh, he bounced off this gap at 110 but doesn't tell you a great deal. Other ones uh, that morning are Citigroup. Uh, again, chart looks almost the, exactly the same. Had a gap, bounced off of it, but not a lot of juice. Energy on the way back, not all that exciting. UNH, uh, United Health Group, um, again, bounces off a gap, not a lot of energy. Uh, probably could see a pullback into that. Uh, Johnson & Johnson and their talcum powder, if I walk that way. I wouldn't need the talcum powder. Johnson & Johnson looks like it's coming back to the 126.18 low of August 23rd. Uh, Goldman Sachs, or if you work there, you have to say the Goldman Sachs for some unknown reason. Uh, lows about the same, 3 million shares on August 15th and October 3rd. A little bounce of no, almost nothing out here. Or energy just a little bit more on the way down than on the way up. Uh, to, to, uh, Wells Fargo. Uh, couldn't be a better company to be a CEO of, could there? Just uh, always taking it uh, a beating on a daily basis. But you know what? The uh, beating may be over. This thing is just light volume going sideways at the moment. Uh, Charles Schwab. Uh, Prologic, uh, 
I was going to say, not much going on there. That evening of the 15th, we go to UAL, which is United Airlines. Uh, again, a lot of these things, even if it's just slightly, and they're just slightly higher lows, and uh, I wouldn't say it horribly lower highs, but I'm going to say significantly better than the lows. Uh, J.B. Hunt, another in the one, uh, J.B. HT. So the uh, transports will probably be moving a lot after that evening and that morning of the 15th. J.B. Hunt uh, actually looking fairly decent on a gap up of a million shares, tested it with 760,000 shares. I would have liked 500,000 shares a lot better, but it does look like it's finding support. Interactive Brokers, Sleep Number Corporation, so not much happening on that. We get into Wednesday uh, uh, the 16th, and we get Bank of America. Uh, they're looking for 58 cents on a $28 stock. Uh, a whole lot of nothing today very light volume. The question is whether or not we're just uh, going to slowly uh, come to a halt until we get these earnings numbers. ABT, eh, just in the middle of yesterday's down move that did have some nice uh, volume. Of course, all of these coming out with, inter uh, with earnings on the Wednesday, the 16th morning. Alley Financial, First Horizon, Bank of New York, a lot of that stuff. Uh, that Wednesday, we start getting into some more technology stocks with Netflix. Um, you might see Netflix go up a little bit uh, into earnings on that 16th, but I don't like thinking that you're going to make a lot of money and the risk is fairly decent. Uh, more in the transports with CSX, uh, United Rentals, uh, Alcoa, Crown Castle, and some of the others. I've got some other one. Uh, should I take some profits on SBGL? Uh, okay. Sibian Gold. Well, you got no volume for the last three days. So that would always tell me that you want to sell while you can. And it does look like this thing has kind of finished in ABC anyway. What's the uh, expansion look like on this? Okay, at ABC would take you to a one-to-one -one ABC at seven dollars and six cents, but <laughs> the volume for the last three days would have me running. I wouldn't want to be betting on the last sixty cents. You got a good trade in here at five dollars and fifty cents, which is uh, when this thing broke above it. Um, yeah, got you're betting on the last 40 cents of this, and I do not like the last three days of no volume. So, yes, I would be taking my cash. Uh, people are looking at my LinkedIn profile. Well, thank you for people. I do almost nothing on any of those social networks, so I don't know why it would matter. Uh, okay, we got that, that done. Uh, question about uh, Microsoft. Will it come back with the rest of the market? And the answer is yes. Question is, if the market pulls back, uh, will it be better? And I think the answer is yes. But you've got uh, a retest probably coming uh, along the 133 level. I don't see this thing going up. Volume's pretty poor so far. Just 12 million shares yesterday. You had 26, 27 million shares. So, again, these things are kind of, I, I wouldn't be pulling the trigger short on it. And we haven't gotten a signal that says we're going to break down. But at the same time, we don't have any kind of signal that says we'll break up. And the question is whether or not we just continue to go sideways until earnings, which are about a week away. So uh, could be a whole lot of very light volume. And again, it'll be very interesting to see what the option market makers do by the end of the day. A lot of those trades are buried and you don't see the trades come out till late in the day in the options market as they pull them out. Oh, we're going to the break. We'll be back in a minute. We've got plenty of time to call. Last two minutes of the show.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're back. Uh, so what do we have? Well, do, 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 do. Oh, um question about apple apple has not closed below it's three by three although anything uh, in that would say that it could pull right back to the 210 205 area uh no volume as it breaks uh, breaks above the 220 53 the july 23rd high excuse me the july 31st high so you want to keep an eye on that um no sign that it wants to break now in fact it may just kind of tick up a quarter every day through earnings until we get a better view of it. But uh, again, uh, we're about a week out uh, from earnings. Uh, and it, generally, you've got two things. Uh, and that is a, a one, one and a half percent bullish bias on average for options expiration. You also have a lot of times where stocks tend to just kind of creep up and uh, and uh, run shorts out of a market going into earnings. So there's kind of a bullish bias over the next week. Uh, but at that point, the question is how many of these stocks are going to actually perform to the level that they think during earnings. And you've got so many of them going into options expiration on that Friday. So a lot of stuff going on. It's going to be a little quiet, like uh, Ike and Tina Turner. I'm going to start off easy. 
and the next week's going to be kind of easy. Then it's going to get rough. And they're going to be down there rolling on the river. And, of course, uh, that's uh, about what everybody looks at. The river. I lived in Cincinnati for a while, and you got to learn how to say the word. R-I-B-B-E-R. -B -B -E it's not a river. It's a river for some unknown reason. But uh, yeah, that and, and saying soda instead of pop. Uh, other than that, pretty much everything's the same. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. And we'll see you here tomorrow, bright and shiny, for Thursday.